All right. So it's been a minute since I've been back in CK3, and, well, with the new DLC that just came out, I figured, why not return? Uh, for the most part, I play CK3 just to kind of tell stories of characters or just try different little things. I don't really play it for a challenge, and that's probably going to be most of the case here. So, with the new DLC, you can be an adventurer, which we will be doing. Um, and one of the things interesting about being an adventurer is you don't really have a hold. You kind of move around from place to place and do contracts. You're essentially a mercenary. But the thing is, I kind of like the idea of starting as an adventurer as a custom character, because that means you can go and take a hold to take a land... Uh, for your own, like I can come over here, I can eventually take Desmond as mine. And that makes a lot more sense than just some random guy starting off as the ruler of this area. We're going to be doing the 867 start because that's the earliest start. And I kind of want this to be a relatively long series. I mean, I'm going to cut out a lot of stuff, you know, part to part and all that good stuff. But for the most part, yeah, that's how we're going to do it. Uh, I am going to load a character. Uh, I'm not going to use... I'm not going to give him... Well, I'm not going to give him all these ridiculous stats. I am going to lower his prowess down to about 35, or actually 30. His learning is going to be 8. His intrigue is going to be 10. Diplomacy, he's going to be 15. He, he's, he's, he, he has the diplomatic part to him. His highest... That is going to be 20, and Marshall and Stewardship is going to be 14. Um, still well over the uh, achievements limit, but like I said, I don't really play these. What the hell is that last name? All right, yeah, that 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 that's we're gonna go with that. Uh, what does the Chonkerton seal look like? Well, you see, I'm gonna of course put the mushroom on there. I mean, for God's sakes, my. Username has been Toxic Fungi13 for forever. Obvious ancestor to Chuck Chonker is uh, he is quite a chunky boy. The the one that I mainly the congenial trait that I'm, I mainly want is of course Genius, um, which is another new thing that they added in. I don't know when this. I think this is more of a base game update than it was the DLC. Is you can pick a favorite child, so you don't have to be stuck playing as your heir. You can pick whatever one of your children you want to play as, and I think it would be an incredibly fun thing to, at some point in Mr. Chonkerton's life, find him a place to call home, and when the time comes to, for him to pass, we don't take over as our heir. We take over as a different child, and we'll figure that out, you know, later on. Uh, because I think it would be kind of interesting to maybe... You know, even if even when we have a hold and all that stuff, we pick a non-ruler uh, child and maybe go be an adventurer as that one. And then eventually maybe come back and fight our sibling for the land or whatever. You know, just something something, something like that. We're going to play on easy because uh, I'm not the greatest at this. And here's where we get our first choice. We get to pick the two first two people. As you can see up there, we have no soldiers. I'm gonna pick the first two people to be a part of our little camp. We can choose people two skilled in diplomacy, two skilled in martial, or two skilled in prowess. So, or we can just not take any, but we'll be by ourselves. So, since I'm going with this whole, you know, mercenary vibe, I think we're gonna want two people that are good at fighting. This is where our camp is right now, down here in our homeland of uh, Desmond down here in the Irish South. I, th The Eagles of God, that is the name of our, of our, you know what? Yeah, we'll keep that. That's way cooler than the one I got, which was like the Good Knights or some shit like that. We're gonna go mug some people. Get 110 gold. We're gonna go mug some people. But we'll go over here and we'll travel to where we need to go. And then this is what we have. We can choose a specific way to go about this, and since we're mugging folks, I think we're gonna want to go with this one. I think these are. Okay, I see. Higher secrecy, scheme phase length, success chance, 
and a balanced range. I'm going to go with this. Remember, we're here to earn. So what you can do is, I only have two people, so I'm just going to go ahead and click check the checkbox and uh, see both my guys get into those spots. And we have a 56% chance at its highest to succeed in this. We don't have a whole lot of people, so this could go pear-shaped quite quickly. I'm just going to fast forward it. And we're going to try and get to five. It's going to take a while for this to progress. And it's still only going to be... Oh, hello. It's only going to be a 56% chance. And apparently we have uh, some... The Lame. Uh, he, is, he is club footed, but he is a monk. And he is a wise man. He is 24 learning. He... Apparently this is going to give me eight stress. Why? Oh, it could give me eight stress. Oh, why don't you... Yeah, you know... Join, our, join my camp, my guy. And he's going to join. Is that really the best role for you? Okay, well, you know, I'm not going to look down upon it. We can do... I do need a physician. He's average. He's going to be better than my other two guys probably by a good bit. Someone got a pet dog. All right. Back alley robbery, Neal. Today's labor has been quite profitable with several good citizens kindly donating their silver to our cause. This man may be the richest yet. I recognize him as Nial, a local magnet of the small wealth of publicly suitable quarry. Perhaps not the richest on offer, though almost imp imperceptible. I hear the sound of well-oiled dagger daggers being unsheathed all around the little alley. So, we have a prowess... We have a prowess uh, option here and two intrigue ones. Obviously, we're going to do the prowess when we have a 9% chance to get this. We'll get two in Gallows Bait, which is a uh, it's like a skill. It's a trait path. Okay, that's right. I forget about these. <laughs> Legitimately gain. Oh, Jesus. All right, knives out. He gave me $50, and he really friggin' hates me. Can't really say... I blame him. Figure stumbles into camp, dirty and tired, clearly in need of a square meal. His name is Carberry. I'm going to mispronounce every single one of these names. I just want you to know that. There are more like me, he gestures off in distance. All of us left to rot after every petty conflict ends. Our sword arms work as well as ever, but our lot is to wander and starve. Oh, so it's a gaggle of veterans, I, I suppose. We're the only ones left and won't rob the vulnerable for food and valuables. Well, you may have walked into the wrong camp. Um, his eyes glint with determination despite his haggard bearing. I'd rather die. So, uh... Oh, because I have the gallows bait trait. Okay. Take every last penny and trinket his possession. I could take his stuff. This fine brooch will give my knights plus three effectiveness somehow. And plus, give me plus two prowess. And the phase length, four days faster for, per scheme phase. Okay, that is quite good. Or I could hire him. I will not be hiring him. Hey, buddy, I'm just going to go ahead and take this. Thanks, appreciate you. You have a good one. All right. Once again, we'll just do... It's all the same, you know. This, 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 this homie's here. How much money do you have on you? He's got $98. Shit. Really? 91%? 91% failed on that one. That's pretty damn sad. I gotta be honest. That's like a, that's like an XCOM level of nonsense right there. Because this is as high as we got right now, this 59%. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to try this. And we got it. We got 110 gold. And we gained 250 provisions. And we gained 10 trade experience in Marauder. Thanks to Chieftain Dunchad's utter inability to enforce order on the streets of his own capital, the Eagles of God are able to shake down the more collective citizen tr citizenry of Port Lyrge for everything they got. Please enjoy me mispronouncing things. Not an honorable way to earn a living, perhaps, but profitable? Extremely. So we can hunt criminals, we can escort an emissary. Well, let's escort an emissary. We're, we're, we're tough guys. We're tough guys. Now, see, there are two different levels of success. You have exceptional success, where you get paid pretty much twice as much. Uh, the, the quest giver likes you more. 
Um, but I think essentially you'll still the, the only it seems like the big difference is the amount of opinion you gain and the amount of gold you get. So, but you still want to you still want to excel at the contract because more money. A delegation from Chief Chieftain I'm not pronouncing that of Desmond saunters through the flaps of my great tent. Greetings, adventurer. Speaks envoy. Many are the roads of this world and treacherous. If you'll work for Desmond, my liege will pay for your expertise. I, Art, am most loyal servant of the Chieftain. It is his words I must carry to the port, to the hall of Chieftain Dunchad. Guide me, protect me, and trust, and entrust my missive does not fail. Pray to fight. Fall prey to fight. Yeah, you know, and his shit can't, you know, go to people that aren't. And moving your camp around is pretty important too. You want to move around because moving around, even like if we, even like we move to like the northern part of the island here, we'll have more contracts available. Yes, I can't listen to the message. And we did get an exceptional success that gives us 317 gold. Now here's what we're gonna do. We have. We can request something from this guy. And what we're going to request is a Minute Arms Regiment. Now, he'll lose 40 opinion of me because I used him for one second. Because I used him for a favor. I could also use him to arrange a marriage and all that, or for provisions, or for just straight-up gold, or to rent a knight. I've never done this one because I don't really like the idea because you only keep the knight for a couple of months or something. And I would rather just recruit people as I go because, you know. Um, and the Minute Arms Regiment is... Much more valuable. I will also spend 100 prestige. But we're going to make that request. And suddenly we are a band of 102. And the other thing, because we have no levies, we have just our knights and our men at arms. We have no levies diluting the quality of our military. So, and you can upgrade your... You can upgrade them just like you can any other time. It costs money. There's no maintenance cost. It's just provisions cost when you move. I'm pretty sure uh, the bigger your uh, group is, the more it costs to move around. It would honestly probably make more sense if there was like a default, like uh, like your provisions went down, period, you know, every month. Because really there's the only thing that's really keeping you from moving, I mean, is contracts and but you can just move not terribly far and end up having some pretty solid contracts regardless. All right, well, apparently we strolled through here. Somebody's in a somebody's in their in armor. Uh consider the armor gone for a price. Offer him loyal squires for his fee. Fealty. I can appoint him as my bodyguard, or I can just leave him to his fate. This is just some wandering dude. He has 10 prowess. He does have aggressive attacker, and he does have tough soldier. And he's got 16 marshal. Ah! Sure. Come on in. We're recruiting. We're, we're in the early days. We're recruiting folks right now. And since we have $300, let's go ahead and take a look. So you can upgrade buildings. You can add little buildings. And all of these have their own little bonuses. The main ones I'm going to be looking at right now is Pavilion because that will actually increase our max number of men-at-arms regimen. There are also other ones that will increase it. I'm, I imagine your armies can get quite big um, through this. It doesn't take 200 gold and 10 months. We're going to go ahead and do that. And while that is going on, we are going to go uh, 61 gold. What about you? 30 gold. Hmm. You know what? I think we're going to I think we're going to move to the center of the island up here. Uh, about here, say. It's going to cost us 429 provisions. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to move on up north. See if we can't get any other little contracts. I can have a lust for land for 35 years. I lose 15 stress because I am ambitious. And a 65 chance I'll gain flexible leader. The flexible leader trade. Uh, best to keep my options open. You should never cross an ant path. He pauses. My great-grandma didn't. She never returned home. 
Oh, Jesus. I have no interest in a fair... Oh, hey, what's up? Ooh, okay. He's obese. He doesn't look that obese. I mean, he's got a fat face, but he doesn't look obese. This guy's quite good. He would be a, a good one as well. 99% chance to win, but 0% chance to get wounded. And he's in my camp now. All right. Camp is here now, and uh, there is absolutely piss all. There was a patch. I do wonder if, if, if the patch changed something. But what we can do... Oh, this doesn't have a holding. Never mind. All right, well, we'll just we'll just do this one, and... And we'll just roll with that. We gotta go hunt down some criminals. Some criminal scum from the local area. Our journey is violently interrupted by the sound of tearing flesh and gnashing jaws. All right, some homies getting attacked by a wolf. I beat the wolf. That was a 56% chance. That was not guaranteed. I could have gotten the wounded trait from that. Also, something that you need to be acutely aware of. Do not... <laughs> do not move your camp somewhere where there is a goddamn plague. You will get sick. It will be no good. It will not be good. It will be terrible. 